let's back up. Notice the column definition is in brackets. That means it's optional. It's not really optional, except it depends on what you're doing. If you're going to add, the definition is not optional. If you're going to modify, the definition is not optional. If you're going to drop a column, you don't need the definition. And that's what we're going to see here in the next few slides. Okay. Again, here's that add. Since we're adding, we have to add the column name and the definition. If we're going to modify, we have to have a column name and a definition. Now again, what we would modify is that definition. We're either going to change the data type or the length of the column. And there's some guidelines we have to understand if we're going to modify a column. The column width must be as wide, at least as wide, as the data it already contains. So if you have a last name that is 21 characters long and that's stored in the table, then you can't modify the last name column to be only 20 characters wide. It will, will not allow you. You'll get an error. If you're using, excuse me, if you're trying to modify a number column and that number column already contains data, you cannot decrease the length of the number column, period. You cannot de decrease the length. You can increase the length of a number column, but you can't decrease it if the column already contains any data. And also note that if you add or change a default value for a column, the default data modification does not affect existing data. Okay. So if you have records that have null values in them and you add, excuse me, you modify your column to add a default value, the default value is only applied to new records. Okay. It doesn't affect the existing records in the table. And here's the example of the drop column. Notice that you only need the column name. You don't need to define the column if you're going to drop it. You can only reference one column per execution in the drop column type alter table statement. Once you drop the column, it is permanent. It cannot be restored. And you cannot drop the last remaining column in a table. Your table has to have at least one column. All right, <clears throat> the set unused command, kind of uh, separated from the add, modify, and drop, but um, we can use a set unused command to not drop a column, but identify it as being unused. And notice there's two separate syntax. The difference is if you use the column keyword, then your column name does not have to be in parentheses. Okay, this is discussed on page 77. Okay. Uh, when you set those column names as unused, they're not deleted. You just can't see the data. You can't see the columns in the describe command. They're still taking up storage space. And if storage space becomes uh, you know, a concern, you may want to drop unused columns. So you could uh, set several columns unused within a table and then just use one alter table statement to drop unused columns and it drops all of the unused columns within that table. You can rename a table. Pretty simple. Rename the existing table name to the new table. If you want to empty the table of data, you can truncate it. What that does is it deletes all of the rows or records in the table. But the structure of the table remains. All of the columns 
are still there in their excuse me in their uh, existing order the data types the definitions are still the same the only thing you did was delete all of the records it's called truncating a table truncate table command if you want to delete a table we drop the table a drop table command now, beginning with Oracle 10G, and it also exists in Oracle 11G, Oracle created a recycle bin. Okay. So, if you drop the table, I'm going to back up a slide. If you drop the table, it goes to the recycle bin. So it's, it's still taking up storage space. You can't use the table anymore. You can't see it. But what you can do, if you want to retrieve it, you can uh, do what's called a flashback. We'll see that in just a moment. Okay. But what you do is uh, you select the object name and the original name from the recycle bin. And the object name is very different than the original name. So, but the object is in the recycle bin. So this is dropping a table without the purge option, it goes to the recycle bin. Now, if you want to, oh, before I get to that, I'm, I'm sorry, getting ahead of myself. The flashback command recovers or restores a table from the recycle bin. Now, I will tell you that I have had trouble with making this work. I've been getting errors. Um, one of the students uh, and myself has done a little bit of research and there's a feature that has to be turned on in Oracle uh, 10G Express uh, that it's not apparently not turned on by default. Okay. So there's a feature that, that has to be uh, turned on in order for this to work. Now, if you are asked to do a flashback exercise and it errors, please don't be concerned. You're not going to lose any points over that. If you want to empty the recycle bin, you actually use a purge table statement. But you need to have the name of the object in the recycle bin. That's where, I'm going to back up a couple of slides. That's where, oops, right here, yep, right here. We select object underscore name, comma, original underscore name, um, from the recycle bin. And we get this name. We need to have that in order to do the purge. Now, you could drop the table using the purge option, and the table bypasses the recycle bin and is completely purged. So you could say drop table, the name of the table, and then the purge keyword, and it's permanently deleted, frees up the storage space, all in one statement. Okay. Once again, I'm not going to read through each of the summary items. You can pause your video here to read each of these bullet points if you'd like. Or you can download or open the PowerPoint from the Desire to Learn course content.